We're going to be changing decibels to fractions in this video. We're at lesson 10a for the GED. And, of course, if you've missed or skipped previous videos, you can check the description for links to help yourself. We can use decimals and fractions to show parts of a whole. And depending on the problem, it may be easier to solve in fraction form or in decimal form. To change a decimal to a fraction, we write the number without the decimal point as the numerator of our fraction. We have 0.125, that's 125 thousandths. We use the 125 as the numerator. We look at the place the 5 is in. It's in the thousandths place. So that's our denominator. We count how many hops, how many places from the right to the decimal point. And that's the amount of zeros we're going to use in the denominator. So for 0.125, we've got 1, 2, 3 hops. So there's going to be 3 zeros in the denominator with a 1, 1,000. And some decimals may have fractions in them, like you might see 0 0.05 and a third. We can change these to fractions also, and I'll show you. Here we have 25 hundredths. We have 0.25. There's two hops to get to the decimal place, so there's going to be two zeros in the denominator. The five is in the hundredths place. We have 25 one hundredths. We can reduce it to its lowest form. If you think of money and how many quarters are in a dollar, we can divide this 25 by 25 and the 100 by 25, and we get 1 fourth. We can use smaller numbers like a 5, but then we're going to have to reduce and reduce. Okay? The larger the number you divide them both by, and remember they have to be the same number that we're dividing them by, the larger the number, the faster you're going to get to the reduced value. Okay? So 0 0.25, 25 hundredths, equals 1 fourth. 25 cents is a fourth of a dollar. Here we have 75 hundredths, and again, if we're thinking of money, 0.75 is like 75 cents, isn't it? And if you think of 75 cents of a dollar, well, that's three quarters of a dollar. So what we do is we count the hops, one, two, the five is in the hundredths place, so there's going to be two zeros in the denominator. The 75 is our numerator. This is 75 one hundredths. And we can reduce this to lowest terms. We can divide it by 5 and do it over and over and over again, and then have to reduce and reduce. Or we can use the largest number we can think of, like 25. Thinking of money, how many quarters are in 75? There's three of them. How many quarters are in a dollar? There's four of them. Remember, it has to be divided by the same number. And we get 0 0.75, 75 hundredths, is equal to 3 fourths. 75 cents is three quarters of a dollar, okay? Let's try another one. Here we have 37 hundredths. There's two hops to the decimal place, so there's going to be two zeros in the denominator. The seven is in the hundredths place, so we have 37 one hundredths. Here we have 34 hundredths. There's two hops to the decimal, so there's going to be two zeros in the denominator with that one. The four is in the hundredths place. We have 34 hundredths one hundredths. And these are both even numbers. So we can try reducing them by dividing them by two. We divide 34 by two and get a 17. We divide the 100 by two and get a 50. And this is as far as it can go because 17 is a prime number. It's not an answer in the times table. The only thing that we can come up with to multiply together to get 17 is 17 times one, which means it's a prime number. Here we have 115 thousandths. There's three hops to the decimal place. We write the 115 as the numerator, so our denominator is going to have three zeros with that one. See? We have 115 one thousandths. And we can reduce this. They can be both divided by five. Remember, same number has to be the for the numerator and denominator to divide them to reduce it. We divide 115 by 5 and we get 23. We divide 1,000 by 5 and we get 200. And 23 is also a prime number. It's not an answer in the multiplication tables. The only thing that we can multiply is 23 times 1, so it's a prime number. It's reduced. Okay? So now we're going to get weird. There's some decimal numbers that will have fractions in them, like this 0 0.05 and a third. We still count the hops from behind the whole number, the 5 here. There's two hops. We can write this as a complex fraction, actually, is what it's called, because we have a fraction as the numerator. See? That two hops from behind the five and over to the decimal tells us we have to have two zeros. That five is in the hundredths place. And remember, 
Fractions are little division problems. I always say that. So this 5 and a third over 100 actually means 5 and a third divided by 100. We follow the rules for dividing mixed numbers, and we make an improper fraction. 5 and 1 third is 16 thirds as an improper fraction. Remember, we go counterclockwise. We do 5 times 3, which is 15, plus that 1 is 16. We use that denominator. So we have 16 thirds. We can write this as a fraction by putting it over a 1 denominator. And now, we just follow the rules for dividing them, which means we have to turn this into multiplication. And remember, we're not using a big, huge x like little grade schoolers anymore. We're using parentheses to show multiplication. All right? We don't want to confuse that big, huge x for multiplication with the variable x, which is a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount. And I know they look different from each other, but when we're doing algebra and we're writing fast, you could confuse these. So we're not going to use this guy anymore, all right? Because x is now going to start being a variable for an unknown amount. So we're going to use parentheses. If the number is right next to parentheses, that means multiplication. So our rule for dividing mixed numbers was we turned it into an improper fraction. We turned that into a fraction. And now... We're going to take away the division sign, and we're going to flip him around to be 1 one hundredth, and we're going to multiply straight across. We can do that. We can get 16 over 300 and then reduce and reduce, or we can just use cross-canceling. You'll learn how to do that in video 7C, and I'll have a link to that in the description, too, if you missed it. 4 times 4 is 16, and 4 times 25 is 100, so the 16 can be canceled out as a 4, and the 100 can be canceled out as a 25. Now when we multiply straight across, we get 4 over 75, and we're done. It's as reduced as we can go, all right? When decimals have a fraction in them, it's usually because we're working with money. It's showing us a unit price, or cost per unit. So a can of food was five and th one third cents per ounce. So if this was money, you know, the decimal point and then the zero and the five, that would be five and one third cents per ounce. What fraction of a dollar is the unit price? You're going to have questions like this on the test. So we need to turn this into a fraction. We write it as a complex fraction of five and one third over 100 because that five is in the hundredths place, right? These are the same numbers that we used above. And we need to divide because this means division. We have 5 and 1 third divided by 100. We turn that into an improper fraction of 16 thirds. Now we have 16 thirds divided by 100, okay? And we can write the 100 as a fraction over 1. And now to divide these, we need to flip this 1 around as 1 one hundredth, and then we multiply. So we take away the division sign, and now we're going to multiply. We know that 4 times 4 is 16, and 4 times 25 is 100. They have a 4 in common, so we turn the 16 into a 4. We turn the 100 into a 25. See, they got cross-canceled out. And now we can do 4 times 1 over 3 times 25. And our answer, because it wants to know what fraction of a dollar is the unit price, is 4 75ths of a dollar. And it's reduced as far as we can go. All right? So I'll have links to those previous videos that we learned that, okay? All right. Now we've got which of the following decimals has the same value as two-fifths? You can do this quickly if you just double this. We can make tenths by doubling this five. Five times two is ten, and two times two is four, so it would be four-tenths. You could just look for four-tenths, so it would be number four. You could also do it the slower way if you're still confused and find the fraction form of each of these possible answers to find the one that's equal to two-fifths. This is 25 hundredths, which is really one-fourth. This is two one-hundredths, which is one-fiftieth when it's reduced. This is two-tenths, which is only one-fifth. We know that number four is the right answer. It's four-tenths. Okay? it reduces to two-fifths. And this one is four one-hundredths, isn't it? That reduces to one twenty-fifth. So we know number four is the right answer, okay? So depending on how much you understand the denominator as a tenth or a hundredth is going to help you go quicker, okay? All right, let's try this one. 
Tala burns 65 and a half calories for every mile she walks. How many calories will she burn in 5.25 miles? That's five and 25 hundredths miles. And it says to round to the nearest whole calorie. So we can solve this if they're both in the same form. This is a fraction, that's a decimal form. We can turn this into a fraction. The 5.25 is five and 25 hundredths. That reduces to five and one fourth. Now we can multiply, because this is one mile, the 65 and a half is one mile, we need five and a fourth miles. So we can multiply the 65 and a half by the five and one fourth. And we change them to improper fractions to multiply. This 65 and a half, we multiply 65 times two and add the one, so we get 131 over two. We multiply the five to the four and add the one, so we get 21 over four. Now we can multiply these two improper fractions by just going straight across. 131 times 21 is 2,751. Two times four is eight. This is a division problem, isn't it? So we can do 2,751 divided by eight on our calculator, because you should still have the calculator at this point in the test when you're doing these. And we get 343.875 on the calculator. Okay? So it says to round to the nearest whole calorie. So you may see this on your calculator as the answer and go really fast and just say, okay, number four is the answer. But boy, be careful, because this could be the one question that made you fail the test. Round to the nearest whole calorie. That means that anything that doesn't have a whole number is not the answer. These have decimals. That's not a whole calorie. So it's not number three and it's not number four, okay? And look how tricky this would be if it says 0.88. Because you may think, oh, rounding, I'm going to round, this 5 is going to tell the 7 to go up to an 8. So number 3 is the right answer, see? So make sure you read this very carefully. If we rounded this number to the next, to the nearest whole calorie, that's the 3 in the 1's place. This 8 tells the 3 to go up to a 4, doesn't it? And then they all drop off. That means number 2 is the right answer. See that? Now, they're going to trick you and put possible wrong answers there that are going to look like the middle of your problem, and you're going to think, oh, there it is. So be very careful when you read this, okay? All right. You should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 121, all right? I hope you do well on it. And remember that you can have a fraction as a numerator. You can even have a fraction as a denominator or both. They're called complex fractions. We're going to get into those more as we get closer to algebra, all right? Our next video, we're going to change fractions to decimals, the opposite of what we just did. We just did decimals to fractions. Our next video, we're going to do fractions to decimals. And if you need more help, check this description. There's going to be links to all these videos that are going to help you, even the ones that we did previously about cross-canceling or dividing fractions in this playlist, all right? So if you need a review or if you just started watching this playlist and you didn't catch those, you can just click on it and go back and watch, all right? So I hope this is going to help you for doing the skill focus on page 121. I hope you do well on it. I hope you have a great day. I'm proud of you. Keep plugging. You're making it. We're getting through this, all right? I'll see you next video. Bye.